55 pound springs, guys. Isn't it such a pretty side cover? On today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we are building a Tillotson 225 engine, but no ordinary Tillotson 225. This is going to have a 285 cam. We're doing DIY head porting and polishing. We're putting oversized valves, a 28 millimeter flat slide carburetor. What does all this mean? This motor is going to turn to 9,000 RPM and make 30 horsepower on Go Power Sports Dyno. We're going to be installing it on a full suspension Megamoto mini bike, maybe even our Tillotson T4 in the future. So we have a big build ahead of us. We're doing a little bit of everything to get these 225 cc's all the way up to 30 horsepower. Let's get right into it. Go Power Sports sent us everything you see here on the table. There's a lot of moving parts here. And if you want to know what we've got here, there are links in the description. So most of the work that we have to do on this engine is in the heads, like rocker arms, bronze valve guides, oversized valves, valve springs. Uh, but we're gonna save that stuff for later. First thing we're gonna do is install the, the flywheel and then get into the side cover so we can put our camshaft and billet side cover on. So uh, I really like this side cover. This is the oh yes the he thick, heavy duty uh, cover. So if there's any problems with the flywheel, like something coming apart, you're uh, better protected. So let's get this thing off and see what we got underneath here. I don't think we have a coil. Can really tell who the weight yeah yeah heavy duty boys and this is the 225 long block we've never gotten one like this so you can actually buy it without a flywheel and put whatever flywheel you want on there what i've seen before is when you install these built flywheels you remove the the what is it key. the key timing key and you put some valve laughing compound inside where the tapered shaft is and you rotate it you get it kind of scored up you reinstall the key, clean up all the, the laughing compound, and it just makes sure that it stays in place. No slippage. There you go. Sweet. That's it. We can just put it in here. Coat it. And, and the idea is to work this laughing compound all the way around to where both surfaces that touch crankshaft and flywheel are went from was it smooth to dull or shiny to dull yep. and that way when you look in there they're both they're both evenly uh, sanded oh you know yeah when the glossiness goes away that means that they're both sealing yeah what you're looking for is an once he wipes it off you're looking for an e look at that that's perfect and you can actually feel Yes. You can almost hear my finger rubbing. So if you didn't have a good fit, you would have, you see how this part is shiny right here? And then this part is dull. This is where the flywheel mounts to. If you had like a shiny surface at the tip or out here at the end or whatever, it would be a, uh, not a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. And so when you tighten up the nut, it, there's just not as much grabbing, but this thing looks like it's matched perfect. So we'll be able to mount it up and... Uh, wipe it out first. And yeah, mount it up. yeah, definitely not. wipe it out. But we'll be able to mount it up and not have to worry about uh, flywheels slipping. We made a neat little tool here out of a retired backing plate from a 30 series torque converter. It slides over the crankshaft with a key in there. You put four bolts on your side cover, holds the crankshaft still, so that way we can torque the flywheel nut to 55 foot. Oh, good. 50. 50. Is it 50? Okay, so that way we could t that way we could torque the flywheel nut to 50 foot pounds. I'm scared. There That's it is. It. Okay. I was starting. To <laughs> it was a, there's a lot. And we'll do another little. Okay. Yep. Okay. Little check. 
And something they, I guess they just started shipping with the 225s is this little pamphlet. So this is the motor that comes on the uh, two, the uh, Tillotson T4 racing cart, which we have a video you need to check out because it's awesome. But this is the motor that comes with it. And it comes with uh, foot pounds and specifications, break-in procedure for the 225 engine. So this is what came in our 225 long block. Uh, hopefully they include them in all 225s that ship out. But if they don't, just pause the video right here and take a look at uh, torque specs if you need them. What's next, boys? Cam. One more. Gasket's on there. I think the gasket is Cam's good. Cam's gonna try and come out. Well, if it does, it does. Because yeah, we're removing it. Yep. Alright. So this is actually a really good cam we're taking out. This bad boy makes great power till 6,500, maybe even more uh, RPM. But it makes 15 horsepower in the stock 225 configuration. Um, but we're gonna be adding a ton more RPM with the 285. All right, so it turns out that the rod in this engine is forged. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We didn't know that. And uh, it does say Tillotson Racing on the rod, but we're going to get up with Go Power Sports and make sure that this is going to be okay for us to turn. Are we going for 9,000 RPM? Yeah. <laughs> we're going for all, we're going for all Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're going for all of it. So I'm going to put this uh, side cover back on just to keep the dirt out and we're going to get up with Go Power Sports. Meanwhile, we're going to move straight to the head right now. Getting the meat and potatoes. Look at that. Looks ordinary. All right, boys. Let's, uh, let's do this the right way and remove the, you know, the push rods. You know, sometimes I leave, leave the push rods in. Look at that. Looks like the head gasket is going to be okay, guys. Yeah, and that's that ring that Taylor was talking about. Firing. Mm hmm. What's the thing with that? Uh, so, actually, actually, I think. It might not be it, but there's, like, that's. There's a, this is basically like a metal ring on the gasket, and that's where all the compression basically gets held. So this is, I mean, like a high compression head gasket will definitely have these. And you can, you can clearly see the difference. So what we have here is some, some stainless valves. We have a brand new intake and exhaust valve. Shave the stem down for yep. better flow. Yeah, and so they cut the the valve stem down because as the gases pass through, you know the stem will actually be in the way. So if you narrow it down, the air the air. So that one's more volume you can get in there. Yeah, and it's uh it's not dished. Yeah, so we're actually adding a little bit of compression because the valve is not dished. Cool. So we're getting ready to tear down this head. It's all it already flows pretty darn good, and it's got some heavy duty valve springs in there. But we we want some more performance out of it, and we've got this really nice fancy tool to help us out. You know what I forgot? Magnet. My magnet. Oh, nope. we got one out. <laughs> we got one out. We got another one out. We're good. So in a perfect world, we would have had the right size magnet to remove those keepers. So this head is completely stripped down and we're going to begin the DIY port and polish job. The idea is that you're going to be opening up the passages and smoothing the sharp corners just so that air and fuel can easily get in uh, and out, just making a path of least resistance. We're not going so darn wide because we want to keep, I think what Ike calls the Venturi effect. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know what that means, but we don't want to go huge. Uh, so we're just kind of smoothing things out, especially because this head already flows really well. It's a 225 RS head. Uh, you can buy one that's ready to go, but we're doing the DIY today. We're just going to be porting the intake, uh, whereas we're going to be porting and polishing the exhaust. Because the roughness on the intake helps uh, break up the fuel and air and helps them mix together uh, to get uh, for a more even burn 
once it reaches the cylinder. So I think I'm gonna get started on the intake and Charles will do the exhaust and uh, smoothing out these edges. I get to use a big word. It's called it's called fuel atomiza atomization. Atomization. Good morning, yeah. everybody. From the kitchen of John's house, it's time for an episode of Cooking with Cars and Cameras. Today we're gonna be baking a scrumptious uh, Tillotson 225 head to accept some new valve guides. So Charles and I got the uh, intake and exhaust ports opened up just a little bit last night, got the edges smoothed down, and uh, we got the old uh, valve, uh, yeah. valve guides driven out, and we're gonna be installing these new ones. So in order to do that, we're gonna preheat our oven to about 400 degrees, and we're gonna throw our head in there. And we're gonna throw our bronze valve guides in the freezer, both for about 15 minutes. The idea is that uh, we want the head to expand a little bit, and we want the guides to shrink a little bit, so that when they meet each other, uh, it's just a better fit, and they'll fit more easily, less hammering. So we're gonna give these 15 minutes, and hopefully these things will drop right in. Lock it. We're there. All right, dude, they're both installed. So now that Charles helped out with the porting and polishing of the head, next up is the three angle valve job that we're gonna be putting on this because we're installing new stainless valves. And since we installed uh, new, uh, the valve guides, these are gonna be like bronze valve guides if I'm not mistaken, they are at least bronze in color. Uh, Anytime you replace the valve guides, you're going to have to make sure that the valves are straight in the in here. Because you can put a guide in and put a valve in and it's not seated. So what we've got here was we have a really nice kit for cutting the the valve seats. I have a 60 degree here, we have a 45 degree, and we also have a 31 degree in the kit. So, what you got to do is you got to very gently turn on this nice tool and you're going to cut into the seat. Now, we don't want to go too much too much on this because we are not uh, oversizing the hole on this one we are replacing it with the same size valve all right and you can see that we definitely have removed material now let me see I got to blow this away all right. of the three. All right. and let's check the valve and I believe I got it right dead on, sir. It is looking good. It is looking good. So there's the exhaust, here's the intake. So all right, man, here we go. The valves are in there. All we got to do now is uh, install the springs and uh, go from there. A lot of people would like to lap the valves um i was told on this not to <clears throat> so we'll just kind of look at it real good and decide so next thing we're going to do is pull out this rod and install a new one now this is a forged rod and it's way better than a standard predator rod but with the rpms that we are going to be turning they recommend that we have this billet rod installed in this engine because well it's a better oiling system on this rod and it should handle everything that we're going to be throwing at it and so, more and more so let's pull this thing out and uh in with the new one so i noticed on this they have loctite on these rod bolts they ain't messing around on these no sir that's pretty cool yep 
Oh, wow, that's cool. Look, it's got a bearing in it. Holy moly. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So the only thing this is missing is the forced yeah, like, oiling. Yeah. Well, and, of course, the, the construction the material. That's pretty darn cool. So this is in between, like, a Predator uh, rod and a full-blown billet rod. That's really cool. There we go, buddy. So for the flat blade screwdriver... You can pop out this little snap ring and we should be able to, you know what? I've always put my pinky in the uh, other ones to pull, pull them out. I can't do that with this one. So it is smaller. It is a smaller uh, wrist pin. So I'm gonna just push it out of this one side. Give it a little tug. Look at that. She's out. Okay. So next thing we're going to install are the bearings here. Now they're identical top and bottom. I'm going to show you how you should install them. So um, first I'm going to show you how not to install them. You don't put them in here and press in the middle like that because what you're going to do is you're going to squeeze the bearing together and, and it's going to have a failure. So I like to line up the bearing right there at the end and I like pushing on the outside edge that easy. You don't add any oil to the back side but you will add some assembly lube to the front side. So there is only one way that these bearings go in. There is a notch right there on the top of that bearing around the edge and there's a notch right there on the cap. Same thing with the the rod. But you put the one end in and then you press on the outside and push them push them down. Not bad. That easy. So the correct way to install this rod you don't want to put any of the assembly lube on here until after you have checked the rod bearing clearance with plasti gauge it'll when, show you in the instructions so when you get that done then you're able to add your assembly lube for reassembly so after you have the rotating assembly uh, installed in your camshaft you really want to check and make sure you have clearance from your rod and your camshaft because you really don't want any contact there because if you do, that's really going to be some bad news. It looks like we're going to be good here. So I'm going to install the side cover. And We've I will... had the clearance at once before. Yes, yes so we So it's have. not uncommon. Um, so I'm going to just install this cover and I will double check one more time. I'm going to get a couple of bolts in so everything is lined up perfectly. And I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to listen and feel for contact. We're good. All right, so we have the new billet rod installed in torque to spec. We have the side cover on. We checked the camshaft clearance and everything is good to go so now it's time to install our what 50 55 pound dual valve springs on our modified head with oversized valves so yes. these things are no joke so we have this valve spring compressing compressor tool which looks a little overkill but 55 pound springs guys this ain't no joke. And it basically grabs the valve and it compresses the spring like that. Yeah. And it gives just enough clearance to drop the retainers in. And you gotta have it adjusted before start. Now the idea is line these up just right and it'll drop in the hole. Get in there. This is a crazy dude. 
So we finally got the keeps in. And the... Uh, one on one. On one of them, <laughs> yeah. And these retainers are actually made out of titanium. And they are gorgeous to look at. So here's one of our new retainers, titanium. And here's one of the factory ones. I'd say it's close to twice the weight of the new one. Which, you know, they say your, your valve train, like every single gram is is important. Uh, right. So it's just really cool to see this hands-on as we're putting it together. Oh my god. <laughs> you can barely press on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can get some movement, but oh my gosh. These things are tight. We ought to be good for 30,000 RPM. Yeah. <laughs> 10,000. So now we're going to be installing the head, and then we're going to be installing the rockers. It's about 28 foot-pounds you're going to tighten these to. Yep. And uh, we're using a factory thickness head gasket. Part of me wants to put a thin one in it, but we were told to use the thick one on this. I'm wondering if it's because the camshaft, uh, the, the lift on the cam, keeping the valves from introducing themselves to the uh, piston. There's one. We're making sure they're installed correctly by rotating the engine over. Yep. Um, and watching them move up and down. There we go. All right, now we have these black venoms 1.3 ratio rockers yes so we're gonna install these so just to know the the roller portion right here goes here we're gonna add some assembly lube to the roller tips well yeah and I'm gonna go ahead and roll them around and let them get lubed up pretty good. Of course I'm going to add some here. And I'm going to add some in here. I want everything very well lubed up. Beautiful thing about these being lubed up is we are also going to check out I'm hoping they're going to leave a line right there on the ends of the valve stems because you want the roller to be in just the middle. If you don't have these push rods at the right length, you might have uh, the roller leaving a mark on the edge of the stem, which is bad. That's going to cause excessive wear and premature failure. So I'm going to, once these get worked in, I'm going to wipe off some of the assembly lube. So when I install it, I can rotate it a few times, take it back apart and take a look and see what, where the grease marks are at on the end of the stems. All right, guys. So we've got the new side cover the billet side cover on this engine and i really love these side covers it has a really cool rubber o-ring seal that goes on the cover which i think seals fantastic uh what you want to do is torque these to 180 to 200 inch pounds isn't it such a pretty side cover oh absolutely okay uh, another thing you got to check is the end play on the crankshaft. You want it to be uh, 10 to 15 thousandths, uh, which we've got on in this case. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to check the valve lash. And what it needs to be is at 3 thousandths. So that would be 0 .003 for the valve lash. And the way you check it is you have the feeler gauge right here and you want to tighten up on this adjuster screw just enough where you feel a little bit of friction. And once you feel that friction, 
you lock down on this lockdown and then you're done. So the intake is three thousandths and the exhaust is three thousandths. Pretty simple. It, aren't those some beautiful rockers? Yeah, I, I was distracted by this. I know. It looks so good, doesn't it? Beautiful side cover. So it's time to seal this engine up by putting the valve cover on. Now, your factory valve cover will not work with these black venom rockers. They uh, run into the cover. So what I'm going to do is stick a screwdriver in here, and we're going to pry out this inner piece. It is pressed in, and you want to uh, use a hammer to get under this groove oh. at first to, to get, raise it up. Then you can pry the rest of the way. Watch the watch the edge. You don't want to bend. Yeah, it. you don't want to mess up the edges of this valve cover. Oh, wrong way. There we go. There's the inner workings of this crankcase vent. It's like a one-way valve. Cool. So we don't want just a one-way valve. We want to be able to hook up our two vent lines where it goes directly back and forth as the piston goes up and down. The less uh, blockage of air movement in the lower part of the crankcase and the upper, the more horsepower. So really, you add these, you actually add some horsepower. So I got the valve cover taken care of and check out these brass fittings. You can get them at your local hardware store. And what this does, if y'all look, we have the upper part of the cylinder here and we have the lower crankcase, which is the bottom of the piston, the bottom of the cylinder. So as the piston goes up and down, it allows us, allows us, is that a new word? Yeah. It, it allows the air to be moved from the top and the bottom freely, which is going to free up horsepower. So basically, like you said, it's free horsepower. Basically. So we're going to be putting on this side cover, and I got to tell you, this side cover is very very thick and it is to help keep thing bad things from happening so if you're turning 10,000 rpm which is probably getting close to what we're going to be turning <laughs> and the flywheel decides to let loose that cover is going to help keep you safer i'm not going to say safe because you know you never know what you can never happen. know what can happen. So we got these hoses going on. They are bright orange. There we go. And I'm gonna add right here in the middle, like a little crankcase bent. I'm gonna add a little bit of a. Sometimes a little bit of a lubrication goes a long way. A little bit of PB inside the engine never hurt nobody. Yeah. When you say a little bit, I mean, that's really a little bit. Yeah. Same thing with, you know, assembly lube or using grease for holding parts together. It's okay. It's all right. The engine will chew on it. Man. Snug fit. Very snug fit. All right. There we go. And we'll zip tie that together. That's right. And we'll make sure it doesn't fly around, but that looks great. It's pretty cool. I can push these on a little bit more, but mm -hmm. we're going to let the engine warm up and maybe it'll uh, go a little bit easier. So we're adding our break-in oil. We decided against putting the Tillotson T4 racing oil in it for our break-in. So just some regular old oil is going to work fine for our break-in. I still wouldn't use any cheap oil for this. And I would also add a little bit of uh, zinc to your oil because we do have 50 pound valve springs in this. So we're going to add a little bit of 
zinc to our oil, which is going to help keep from wiping out cam loads, especially with 50 pounds of pressure. It wouldn't take long. Guys, I got to say the engine's looking fantastic. It is looking pretty good. You know, I love a, a good high revving engine, and this is... Oh, this one's supposed to do it. This one will probably go over 9,000. So we plan on running this engine with this uh, hand throttle like this, and uh, you really want to make sure, before you run this thing, make sure it's got idle and wide open. Well, wide open is not as important as the idle. Looks like we got idle, boys. Sweet. You boys ready? Man, I'm ready. I was born ready. Yeah. It revved up kind of high. Right away. You know, you got to switch right It's broken oh, in I, now. I, I so didn't think let's that. double check that uh, carburetor. Carburetor. So, uh, <laughs> remember, always check, make hey, sure we, you have idle. And yeah, then we no. went and switched our uh, our throttle cable. I, I swear I looked. All right, look in there. Interesting. Doesn't it look closed? That looks closed to me. It could probably go it, down a little know, bit. Yeah, it, it might be it's open. It's quivering. So we obviously needed to make an adjustment to our twist grip that we installed just for testing purposes. Remember, it needs to be all the way down. The slide needs to be all the way down for idle. So, double checked it, and we should be good to go. Are we on? Yeah. We let the engine break in per Tillotson's recommendation, letting the engine heat cycle a few times with a total run time of about 20 minutes. When we were finished, we noticed we had a bit more crankshaft end play than what we felt comfortable with, so we decided to take the side cover off, check everything out, change the oil, and add another shim. Now the foam part. Yes. Yeah, this is gonna be cool. Which one do you wanna do first? Uh, that one. That one. That one and that one. So I wasn't here for this part. What what does that okay, do? Okay, so there's these, only two. Okay, that's fine. These screws right here, you screw them into the billet side cover, and it presses on the dowel pins that are in the block, which pulls the the cover off. Very cool. Yes. So, um, hmm, probably ought to. Uh, Put something under or let that drain into the bucket in no. that or we oh there we go okay now that's let's... a little bit there no idea so you got to be real gentle and you don't want to hit that rubber gasket either no all right that's uh that's basically all the way in so i guess <laughs> well, we're like a fifteen hundred dollar engine build on top of a pot that you found in the woods <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> if the handle wasn't broken i was gonna clean it up and cook with it oh, okay boy. so Damn. we should have put the engine on top dead center um because now the the valve springs are well, it might be on top of the center i don't know we oh. should have checked we should have checked but the cam was trying to fall out but it's fine i doubt it's lined up anymore it, it'll be fine We'll take the spark plug out and we'll roll it Yeah. Real. Everything looks fine, right? Yep. I mean, we got some glitter. Here, let me see this. Yeah, you can see the glitter in there. It's not too, too much, but I mean, it's normal and it looks good. So we're going to put that extra shim in. Right here. Perfect. Sit right there. And that's going to tighten up our end play to be within spec. Yeah, all right. So we got the oil changed. Now let's uh, check the end play. We probably should have checked the end play before adding oil to it, boys. That's just true. in case we got to take it out. Oh, I think that's fine. 
Um, the correct way is to have your your uh, dial indicator on the end of the crankshaft and check it. But you know we were within spec in the beginning, and just adding that shim after we ran it, it should be within spec. My butt, <laughs> not the dyno, but <laughs> the eyeball. Ne never mind. It's it's fine. Eyeballed. It's good. <laughs> Icron the icrometer is fine. It's good, boys. So that does it for our 9,000 plus RPM big valve Tillotson 225 build. Uh, the guys from Go Power Sports said it should make over 30 horsepower on methanol. So we've never experimented with methanol before, but we just might with this case. I think we're going to run it on pump gas for a while and then convert it to methanol later. But I don't know what the power conversion would be, but if it's over 30 on methanol, then at least 25 on gasoline, it's safe to say. I don't know, but it's gonna make a whole lot of power on the go-kart that we end up putting this on. So coming up next on Cars and Cameras, or coming up soon, we're gonna do a, a Honda clone shootout, which is a type of video I love. I get to get up my whiteboard and we can write all kinds of data on it, but we're basically gonna be comparing engines from stock too heavily modified like this one. And this is gonna be on the upper end of that comparison all around the Cars and Cameras Grand Prix on our Manco Dingo. So be sure you hit the notification bell uh, to get reminded when we upload that episode. Anyway, to help support the channel, uh, to support our projects and builds and the facility here, go to on our website, cars-cameras.com and pick up some of our merchandise. Thank you all for watching again. Be sure to check out links in the description for these Go Power Sports parts. It was kind of a, a lot of pieces went into this build. So the list in the description will have a complete list of everything you need uh, to put one of these together. Anyway, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you next time. Oh, God. Ooh, I feel the heat.